Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. First things first. Next week will be our monthly Q and A. So please send me your questions in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel of the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. Last week, I talked about five energy in Tai Chi. Today, I'd like to talk about five energy in Xing Yi. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Lan Gui Ren, a very special tea indeed. Lan Gui Ren is not a pure tea according to Chinese tea standards, but the flavor of this tea is very unique. It is especially a great choice for those who are not familiar with Chinese tea but want to give it a try. This is what the Lan Gui Ren tea leaf looks like. You can see that the shape of the leaf is uncommon compared to most other tea leaves. The leaves are rolled into a bowl shape and coated with a mix of ginseng powder and other herbal powders such as licorice, fragrant osmanthus flower extract, and edible adhesive. However, after you add this tea to hot water, the tea leaf will unfold to its full size, like this. The tea leaf used to produce the Lan Gui Ren is Wulong tea. Wulong tea leaves coated with ginseng and other herbal powders offer a great tea experience. So, people often call it ginseng Wulong tea. Lan Gui Ren is a very modern invention, originally from Taiwan, followed by later productions in many places such as Fujian province. Some manufacturers claim their Lan Gui Ren to have a history worth at least 500 years if not more, which is not true at all. Very often, Colorful stories are fabricated around this tea for promotional and marketing purposes. In China, we say, "He cha bu shi he li shi." We are drinking tea, not history. Lan Gui Ren is a very beautiful name in Chinese. Lan means orchid. Gui Ren is a title for imperial. Consorts of the Qing Dynasty. So, Lan Gui Ren can be translated to Orchid Beautiful Lady. Some tea companies claim that Lan Gui Ren tea was named after Empress Dowager Cixi, one of the most powerful empresses in Chinese history from the Qing Dynasty. If you study Chinese history, you must have come across mentions of her name. So, it is impossible to name a tea after her because she was not a popular figure at all in Chinese history no matter how she was. Also, there are often origin stories for this name, none of which make any sense either. So, giving this tea such a beautiful name in terms of sound and imagery is just a part of its marketing campaign. To brew Lan Gui Ren, water at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes is ideal for the first brew with 30 seconds added for each subsequent brew. I have some Lan Gui Ren tea at home. I don't drink Lan Gui Ren by myself, but only serve it to family and friends, especially those with a little to no tea experience. Also, Women like this tea a lot since 
some manufacturers claim it to be good for their skin. The color of the tea decoction is mostly determined by the type of oolong leaf. Usually, it is dark yellow or light orange. This is the tea leaf, and uh, this is the tea decoction. Great color and uh, fragrance. The health benefits of a Languiren depends on the quality of oolong tea and added herbal powders such as ginseng. However, due to the pleasant flavor of this tea as well as the herbal powders added in the coating, this tea is good for digestion. People usually consume this tea more for its flavor than for health benefits. I'm sure you all will enjoy this tea. Do let me know what tea you want me to talk about in the comment section. Now, let's move on to today's main topic, 5 Energy in Xing Yi Practice. Topics covered in today's video include first, Xing Yi's 5 elements and 5 energies, second, 5 statics and 5 dynamics of 5 elements. Third, Yi Qi concept and five energy practice. Fourth, principles of five energy practice. Fifth, misperception. Sixth, demonstration. Seventh, correction of a student's practice. And eighth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic one, Xing Yi's five elements and five energies. In one of my Xing Yi introduction videos titled Xing Yi Five Elements Theory and Practice, I talked about the five element theory and its application in Xing Yi practice in detail. Link is in the description. The main contents of Xing Yi include five elements and twelve animals practices, which focus on the five types of power and 12 sets of martial skills, respectively. In that video, I especially emphasized that even though the five elements movements can be applied in combat situations, the main objective of five elements practice should be Xing Yi power and not martial applications. However, in 12 animal practice, 12 sets of specific martial skills which are built upon Xing Yi power practice should be emphasized. Then, other practices and contents such as 8 words practice, routines, and martial weapons are built upon 12 animal practice. Those advantageous features, especially the well-designed system through generations of practitioners make Xing Yi popular in the Chinese martial art community. My video titled Xing Yi Building Blocks, Requirements and Expectations introduces the contents and the structure of Xing Yi. Link is in the description. A practitioner should know the basic contents that a style offers, no matter what style. The five element practice, a key building block of Xing Yi, is used to help master the practice of the five types of martial powers and illustrate the key elements of Xing Yi. You need to have a deep understanding and good practice of this key content if you want to elevate your Xing Yi practice to an advanced level. In Tianjin, a place where Hebei-style Xing Yi was mainly developed in the last 150 years, people would judge someone's practice based on their Fa Jin or power releasing ability, which is mainly achieved through the practice of the five elements. 
all the time standard is still relevant today and uh, any deviation from that standard is the dilution of the art. As introduced in prior videos, Xing Yi five elements correlate to five types of uh, objects used to describe these powers. They are first, Pi Quan or metal fist moving like an axe, Zuan Quan or water fist moving like a water fountain, Beng Quan or wood fist moving like an arrow, Pao Quan or fire fist moving like firing cannon, Fifth, Heng Quan or earth fist moving like flying cannon ball. By the way, there are different versions of these descriptions regarding using objects to express the nature of a movement. What I am introducing here is the most popular version in the community. So, what is the nature of these powers according to the traditional practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Five statics and five dynamics of five elements. Any martial movement used for application purposes is in a dynamic state. Well, it remains in a static state when an object is used to express its imagery. For example, the trajectory of a metal fist is expressed as an X. Beng Quan or wood fist moving like an arrow, and so on. So, how is the dynamic concept described in traditional martial art practice? Well, the answer is very simple. Chinese martial artists in the old times used the term Yi Qi Zhi or simply Yi Qi to express the nature of a movement. So, what is Yi Qi? Yi Qi consists of two characters, Yi which means one, and Qi which means energy. Put together, Yi Qi has many meanings such as Hun Dun, 15 days, continuity, and so on, depending on the context. For example, Wang Tingxiang a Ming Dynasty philosopher and politician said, quote, Tian Di Wei Pan Zhi Qian Zhi Yu Yi Qi Er Yi Yi Qi Zhi Zhong Ji Yu Yan Yang. End quote. Translation There is only Yi Qi or one energy before the differentiation of the universe and the earth, and the Yin and the Yang energy are included in Yi Qi. End translation. According to him and the most other Chinese philosophers of his time, Yi Qi or one energy exists before the polarization of the yin and the yang or differentiation of the universe and the earth. By the way, the character Zhi added after Yi Qi means the word of in English. So Yi Qi Zhi means one energy of. The English translation sounds strange when considered in isolation, but will make total sense when used as the prefix for other terms. This will be very clear later in this video, so keep watching. In the old days, the Chinese martial art community used Yi Qi as a term to describe the nature of energy. Some people falsely claim that many great martial artists in the old days were not educated. Well, they could be considered to be lacking in formal education per modern standards. They were absolutely well educated according to the old standard, especially so in the traditional and classical concepts. An even more interesting phenomenon was in the old days that, even though some great martial artists 
reached a very high level in terms of practice, and some of them were illiterate. People who wrote those training manuals were highly educated according to the traditional standard. So, being able to analyze and explain those classic training manuals, especially the key theories, is the fundamental skill for any martial art expert. The high average standard of classical education in the old time is exactly why the term Yi Qi was popular back then, but that is not quite the case nowadays because of the general lack of classical education in the community, which is an unfortunate situation. So, what are the specific Yi Qi based terms used to describe the Five Elements Powers. For Pi Quan of the Martial Fist, it is Yi Qi Zhi Qi Luo, or One Energy of Rising and Falling. To Zuan Quan of the Water Fist, it is Yi Qi Zhi Liu Tong, or One Energy of Smooth Circulation. To Beng Quan of the Wood Fist, it is Yi Qi Xun Huan Wang Lai, or One Energy of Recurrently Forward and Backward. To Pao Quan of the Fire Fist, it is Yi Qi Zhi Kai He, or One Energy of Opening and Closing. To Heng Quan of Earth Fist, it is Yi Qi Zhi Tuan Ju Hou Fen San, or One Energy of Gathering and Extending. These five terms should now give you a better idea of the prefix one energy of or yi qi zhi. To understand the nature of the five elements practice in terms of their energy manifestation, now let me further explain them one by one. One energy of rising and falling of the Metal fist implies that the body and hand movements should emphasize the upward and the downward motion in power generation. One energy of smooth circulation of the water fist implies that the movement and energy flow should be smooth and circular in directional changes during power release. One energy of recurrently forward and backward of the wood fist implies that the body and the hand movements should emphasize the continuity during power release. One energy of opening and closing of the fire fist implies that the body structure and the hand movements should feature the opening and the closing motion in power generation. One energy of gathering and extending of the earth fist implies that body structure coordinates with the hand movement in energy contracting and extending. So, in the old days, Xing Yi practitioners used the term Yi Qi to express the nature of each type of martial energy of the five element practice, which is a dynamic approach to describing energy manifestation. It is a better way to help a practitioner understand the fundamentals of each element of Fa Jin training. If you have a hard time with power execution of Fa Jin, you should pay attention to this one energy concept and apply it to your practice. By the way, I have explained the terms such as opening and closing, rising and falling, contracting and extending, and so on in prior videos. I recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Again, it is worth noting there are different versions of this concept and 
what I'm introducing is the most used version in the Hebei style of Xing Yi. So, focusing on the concept of Yi uh, Qi in the Xing Yi five element practice will take your practice to a whole new level. So, how should you practice the five powers according to the Yi Qi concept? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Yi Qi concept and five energy practice. Any practice at an energetic level is an advanced topic. Specific practice is necessary in order to practice the Yi Qi in five element fist and improve the five powers of Xing Yi. So, how should you apply Yi Qi or one energy in Fa Jin training? To answer this question, we have to talk about how to manage the power aspect in training, which I have introduced a couple weeks ago in my video titled Internal Style Concept 51 Ego and the Bear in Xing Yi. Link is in the description. In that video, I emphasized the importance of Tai Ji in Liang Yi development. Energy, especially Yi Qi, which is used to describe the nature of the five element power, starts from a Wu Ji state, which is the state that prepares for the power generation. From Wu Ji, the different body parts work together to form the physical conditions according to the Liang Yi or Yin Yang state and eventually release the energy, which is the ending state of Liang Yi. This is why I call it energy manifestation, which reflects the process of energy evolution internally and externally, physically and mentally. It is a dynamic approach compared to using a subject to describe the trajectory or physical feature of a movement. To reach an energetic level, body coordination becomes more important than ever. At that stage, instead of focusing on movements of individual parts of the body, every body part should work together under the guidance of the mind. Gradually, focusing purely on the body movement and energy motion is the objective for a better level. Eventually, body movement and energy motion should unify as one since body movement is the foundation of energy motion, and energy motion is the result of body movement. So, the ability to sense the energy change in the body instead of mere physical sensations is an indicator of advanced practice. Understanding the nature of each energy, focusing on the whole body coordination, sensing the internal energy change, and visualizing the application of the movement are all important aspects of uh, mastering Yi Qi practice. Since this is now entering an abstract territory, I will save further discussion for the future. Now, let's look at some important principles of the five power practice in the next topic. Topic 4. Principle of uh, five energy practice. Principles are relevant to an advanced and abstract topic, make the set topic easier to understand. The Yi Qi of five power practice is no exception. Today, I'd like to introduce one principle related to Yi Qi. She Xing Qu Yi. She means to give up or to lose. Xing means form, qu means keep, and yi means mind. Put together, it means to lose the form but keep the mind. 
I borrowed this term from a traditional Chinese painting to express the relationship between the energetic and the physical aspect at an advanced level of Xing Yi practice. Form or physical structure is always important, no matter what level of practice, beginner or advanced. However, Yi or mind or source of Yi Qi of energetic practice is more important to an advanced practitioner. Shi Xing Qi Yi or lose the form but keep the mind reflects the relationship between Xing and Yi from a more abstract but more profound perspective. Again, Shi or to lose or give up does not mean neglect or ignore. It means at a certain level, Yi, mind, energy, Yi Qi is more important than the physical form. So the takeaway here is to focus on Yi while retaining Xing. Applying this in your practice after you master the basic Xing Yi five elements will elevate your practice. Now, let me clarify a common misperception about the Yi Qi concept. Topic 5 Misperception As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the Yi Qi or One Energy concept has lost popularity over the decades owing to the decreased training in classical language and documents with time. This is an unfortunate phenomenon that I'm working on to rectify via my video series. A very common misperception is that when understanding five elements as five types of martial movements, objects such as an axe, a water fountain, an arrow, and so on, are enough to express the imagery in Xing Yi practice. This could not be further from the truth. Let me clarify. I classify the classic explanation of the five elements as five power into two approaches, static and dynamic. The approach that applies different objects to express the nature of power is the static one, while the approach that uses the one energy concept to explain the nature of a power practice in the five elements is, indeed, a dynamic approach. A static approach will, at the most, only remain at the physical level. Many practitioners, especially beginners, try to imitate the movement and the trajectory of an object, such as an axe. Thus, keeping themselves limited to a physical level with no possibility of reaching an energetic level. Very often, physical exaggeration of an element of a practice leads to an external approach to an internal style, which should be avoided in practice. Remember, like I mentioned earlier in this video, a reason for this problem is that in modern times, many practitioners do not have access to classical knowledge as in the old days. So, a mistaken approach often ends up becoming the norm in the community, which should be identified and corrected by all of us at the earliest. To summarize, I recommend you pay enough attention to the energetic elements of a practice beyond the physical aspects of an internal style. That is sure to enhance your practice. Now, let me show you how to practice Yi Qi Zhi in the next section. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a couple of Xing Yi five element practice in order to demonstrate the Yi Qi concept. To make the practice more visible, I will slow down the movement.
Topic 7. Correction of a student's practice. Today, I'd like to correct my student practice of this concept. Okay, now let my students demonstrate the Tuo movement of Xing Yi, then I correct his movement. One, two, three. Okay, now, thank you, let's go move back. First of all, when we keep this posture, okay, this posture, look at this side. Second, in that, make sure in that finger straight. And then here has the slightly holding motion. An elbow extend forward slightly. Then palm move up, right? With the, then at the same time, the right hand move downward. Then body steadily leans to the left. Then <coughs> nice movement. Right. Then repeat the same. Yes, very good. Thank you. Topic eight: takeaways. First, Xing Yi's five elements and five energies. Xing Yi's five element practice is aimed to practice five types of energies that are used in. Self defense. Second, five static and five dynamics of five elements. Applying objects to describe the trajectory of martial movements is the static approach, where applying the one energy concept in practice is the dynamic approach. Third, Yi Qi concept and five energy practice. Unifying movement and energy in practice, especially being able to go beyond the physical level is a key approach in Xing Yi. Fourth, an important principle related to the Yi Qi concept is Shi Xing Qu Yi, or lose the form but keep the mind. It actually means to focus on Yi while retaining the Xing. Fifth, a common misperception in the community is that it's enough to focus on and imitate the physical movements of objects such as an axe, water fountain, and so on in the five element practice. Remember, this is a misperception and you should not neglect the energetic aspect per the Yi Qi concept. That brings us to the end of today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions for the monthly Q&A next week. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.